Today on Houston Live, local comedian Chang Wang brings the laughs to kick off Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And from Mexico to South Padre, we're showing you incredible travel deals for that summer getaway. Plus, mint juleps and fascinators, where you can go to celebrate the Kentucky Derby happening this weekend. And Hollywood legend George Lopez is chatting about his new film, Walking with Herb, and also what it means to have a little faith. All on that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Well, welcome everyone to Houston Life. It is Thursday, baby Friday. April 29th. I'm Courtney Savala. Why are you calling me baby? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Closer to Friday. I thought you were saying, like, instead of baby Friday or Friday Junior, I thought you were saying it's Thursday, baby. Hey, baby. It's Thursday. Almost Friday. What's up, baby? Hey. You could take it anyway. Good to see you. It's good to see you, too. We're going to have a lot of fun on today's show. I'm oh, excited. Lily Pulitzer dress, by the way. Well, thank you. It's looking so nice. Hey, we missed you last night. So Justin Stapleton, uh, you all know him, KPRC2 meteorologist. He's on the board of this organization called Harrison's Heroes. Uh, we had them on the show years ago when Houston Life first started. And if you don't know their story, you got to check it out. I posted on my KPRC2 Facebook page a link where you can learn more about what they do. But essentially, they support kids and families who have been dealing with pediatric cancer. And uh, I think we have some video if you guys want to roll it. There you go. Um, they actually had the special wine label that was created. Justin's showing it off. He did a great <laughs> job pouring. Um, the proceeds go directly back into the organization. But what they do essentially is they support these young people and their families. When a young person is diagnosed with cancer and they are admitted to the hospital, yeah. their life stops, right? They can't see their friends. They don't go to school. So what Harrison's Heroes does is it provides them a way to be reminded of home right. by providing them with activity boxes and things that they can do to sort of get their mind away from their treatment. And oftentimes, a lot of these young people, they're not even in the hospital with their families I because know. they might have, you know, a single parent or, you know, parents working multiple jobs. So it was great to, to go out last night. And it also allows them, if I understand correctly, for that these patients to actually get out of their room and go into another space within the hospital. In many cases, kind of yeah. A little bit of a release there. Another space in a hospital where they can do creative activities and, you know, the little things that we all take for granted every day, but it's good that they're they're giving back. A lot of people asked about you. I'm sorry I wasn't there. You know, school nights are so hard, not, not because of school, just activities and everything else going on. So we were dividing and conquering last night. Baseball, baseball, baseball. No worries, no worries. Have you noticed traffic is getting a little heavier? Like, people are actually getting out and about a little more than they were just a few months ago. Oh. Yeah, and they're also, you know, bumper tappers. They're 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 driving crazy. Well, it is Houston. I don't like it. We're not exactly known for being nice to each other on the road. On the road. Nice to your face. Still lots of construction out there, too. There orange is. the state color. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I love a good fashion magazine in style, glamour. Have you seen this title that Glamour magazine has right now? It is so fantastic. We have, it's an influencer. Her name is Enya. She has Down syndrome and she's truly breaking barriers. She's only 26 years old and she is the latest cover model on Glamour Netherlands. Look at her beautiful, she's beautiful. face. Beautiful. She, Enya runs the beauty and style account Down Syndrome underscore queen. Go check it out. Her, her account is really fantastic. According to her Instagram post, it's her very first cover, but also the first major cover in the Netherlands with someone with Down syndrome on it. And Enya, you know, I went down and, and just kind of read this article, looked a little bit more, and today when I was looking at her Instagram account, you know, her, her nails are beautifully done, but she does a lot of like makeup tutorials. And she said the purpose of the page that she told British Vogue actually is to not only break stereotypes. She says she tries to make people understand me for who I am and that there's no need to think in boxes, she told them. She also went on to say that I want to show that I have a nice life, that I can do almost everything, and that I have a future with dreams. Wow. Isn't that incredible? It's so touching. And, you know, we have an Uncle Sonny with Down syndrome. Brandon's mom, Susan, her younger brother, uh, has Down syndrome. And my, my mom, actually, my late uncle who passed away, my, my mom's brother had extreme special needs. And I think it's so great that we're finally, you know, putting people like Enya on covers of magazines. I mean, they should be able to do whatever they want to do in this world.
world. And there was a time in not too de distant history where if you had special needs or you had Down syndrome, you were sort of hidden away. You were locked away. Many families pretended that didn't happen. And you know, even in 2021, I still hear people, I think many times inadvertently, using the R word using, it's a slur. Yes, it that is. oftentimes is synonymous with like, oh, well, that's so stupid, that's the R word. Not right. Every time I hear that word, especially when an adult is saying it, I just think, oh my gosh, folks, like you realize you're using a slur. And people like Enya, um, I'm offended by it, and I right. don't have Down syndrome, but people like Enya, I'm certainly, um, I'm certain it, it rocks her to the core. So I hope we can all eliminate the R word from our vocabulary. I hope so too. And we're looking at her, you know, you were seeing her photo. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. And um, I have a story too. One of my very first friends on this earth was Pat. She was a neighbor um, of ours. She had Down syndrome and she would come over to our house every day. My mom tells stories that she would walk, you know, walk me in my stroller. But I remember, you know, being 10, 11, 12 years old, hanging out with Pat. She was such a cool young woman and an influence not only in my life but all the kids lives on our street because she hung out with all of us and That's she was so our group great. she was our friend so much love to give yeah and uh good for her having her moment in the sun absolutely go check out her account she's adorable adorable i hope this is just the beginning for her as well oh i think so i think she's she's going up for sure okay so i saw a story that caught my eye uh how about overstepping boundaries you know sometimes when the grandchildren are born and they go hang out at grandma and grandpa's house and maybe they stay up a little bit later or eat all the sugar giving all the candy yeah everything that you don't want your kids to eat they eat no i don't know what you're talking about totally <laughs> and whether you're a parent or a grandparent maybe you've had a little bit of friction about okay. how the children are being raised because sometimes grandparents have a different idea so check this out. There were these grandparents who decided against the will of the parents to pierce their <gasps> grandchild's ears. No. The granddaughter had essentially... How so, old is the granddaughter? Not um, like 30, right? I, I, no, she was a younger child, like okay. elementary school age. So essentially, the, the parents had previously told the grandparents like, hey, no Don't ear piercing. This? Yeah, like we are waiting. She's nine years old. No, nine months old, rather, nine months old. So they were going to hold off until she was old enough to make the decision for herself, right? Like the kid's old enough, like, hey, totally I'm normal. Yeah. Well, grandparents went and did it anyway. What would you do? I'd be so mad. I would. So grandparents aren't allowed to watch the child anymore. I don't blame the parents. <laughs> They're saying the parents are overreacting. What do you guys think, though? Well, here's the thing, if the parents have a rule in place and they've already talked about it, how are they trusting them moving forward? Yeah. And, and that's family, right? So you feel like when you leave your kids with family, you're like, awesome, this is great, you don't really worry. Now what, what's next, tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Come home, 10 months old, big old tat. Her arms just look so bare without them. <laughs> Nine months old. Well, uh, I wonder if we'll get an update from these parents as this child gets a little bit older. But I think if I were the parent of that child, I, you know, I, grandma probably wouldn't be watching the, the kid anymore. Yeah, especially after they've had a conversation. Yeah. Conversation or not, but we've already talked about, we're not gonna do it right now, and then it's, Beep, beep, beep. We're going to go over here and get it done. Overstepping boundaries, if you ask me. All right, still to come on Houston Life, the hilarious science fair project one sixth grader submitted that has now gone viral. And we're going to check in now with Joe Sam, who has a great way for all of us to enjoy the Kentucky Derby. What's up, Joe? So you know what? We're hanging out right now at Reverie on Richmond. They're going to have a huge Kentucky Derby watch party that's going to be happening here this weekend. The star of the show right now, the mint julep, the traditional drink for the Kentucky Derby. We're going to be showing you how to make that and exactly how it tastes, too, when Houston Life returns. When it comes to school projects, I, I freak out a little bit. I'm one of those parents, you know, because... Like helping the boys along? Well, yeah, but we, we're the ones that, you know, they do the work. The kids don't come to school with these pristine projects. I mean, it's, it's legit for their age group. And you supervise them. We supervise them, buy the materials, but, you know, it's... So I, I love this story because you can tell that this kid's heart and soul was in it. Okay. This is all about a science fair project, and now it's gone viral. Okay. So it's a homeschool science fair project by sixth grader. His name is Caden Griffin. He wanted to know if a cat's tushy 
touches all of the surfaces in a home. What? Yes. He and his mom applied non-toxic lipstick to two of their cats. Excuse me? And gave them a series of commands. It, did they put the lipstick on their... Tush. Oh. The lipstick was removed, by the way, as soon as they collected the data. Okay. In conclusion, they did find that chances are favorable that your cat's bottom has not and will not touch all the things and surfaces in your home. What? Scientific data. I think it's funny. It's, it's not the exploding <laughs> volcano, and it's not the things that we see all the time. Is there a theory that some people have, though, that cats' backsides touch every surface in your home? I don't know. I don't... They just go everywhere. Not go. <laughs> litter boxes for that not go but you know they kind of they're free roamers but you know cats are kind of climbing on things i mean dog <laughs> my boys call it the boot scooting booty i can't even talk what the boot scooting booty the boot scooting booty you know like when, when a dog on the ground and do that i've seen dogs do that <laughs> Sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I thought you said I saw a guy do that. A guy do that? I have seen a couple guys do that, but that's too long of a story to get into now. Wow, that is a fascinating science experiment. I wonder if our viewers can top that. <laughs> Let's hear from you all. What's the most memorable school project you or maybe your kids have done? Maybe you've helped them along with this, right? I hope so. Join this fascinating <laughs> conversation on our Houston Life Facebook page and bonus points if you have pictures oh. or even videos. Oh, that's so good. Are you going to be okay? I, no, I'm good. Let's get a drink. The mint julep is the traditional go-to cocktail to cool down at the Kentucky Derby, and they're pretty tasty and strong, too. As some of my favorite cocktails. Joe Sam is hanging out at Revelry on Richmond with tips for creating the perfect derby cocktail ahead of uh, a big watch party, I understand, Joe, they're having this weekend. Yeah, they're going to be having a huge watch party here. They're encouraging everyone to come out with their derby attire on to come and enjoy some of these mint jubes that we have here. And I have Ted here with me, the owner and bartender, who's also dressed in his Kentucky Derby attire. We got the mint juleps out. You're going to show us how you guys make them here at Rivalry on Richmond. Absolutely. This is actually a very simple cocktail to make. It's only got three ingredients. Um, we're going to start off with eight to ten fresh mint leaves. Oh, look at that. Okay, you got to nice use fresh mint. Right? Okay. Then we're going to go with simple one half ounce of simple syrup. That's a one to one ratio of sugar to water. Mm -hmm. um, then you're going to use your favorite bourbon. Ours is Maker's Mark 46. I love we a use, good Maker's Mark too. We use two ounces of that. Okay. And the next step you have there is to muddle the mint. Now you want to be really careful when muddling the mint because it's so delicate. So muddling the mint, that's just basically squeezing all of that fresh good refreshing mint out of there from the leaf that you Correct. have Correct. So typically you would twist when you muddle something with the mint. You don't want to do so because you're just trying to press out the juices and right. it's very delicate. So 10 to 12 good presses like that. Then another key ingredient is the pebble ice. Oh yeah. Right. So Keep you're going to nice fill it up ice. about halfway there. And as you'll start to notice, once we stir this, your glass is immediately going to start to froth. Okay. And that's a big part of it. This stainless steel cup that we use it gives it nice a conductor frost. correct so then you're going to top this off basically making an adult snow cone <laughs> hey. the best kind you can find <laughs> get um, some mint in there and we're good to go you're going to add some mint you want to use a lot of fresh mint give it a good smack to wake it up and there we have it and you, that is it guys they're going to have their huge watch party that's going to be happening here it's going to kick off around two o'clock we're going to get ready to cheers with this mint julep i'm going to probably save some for the rest of the segment courtney and Derek, we sent some back to you in the studio there when we come back we're going to be talking about the hat contest they're going to have here cheers to you my cheers. friend that's the studio. This Cheers. is delicious. Yeah, we got the cocktails, Joe. Thanks so much. We'll see you in just a bit. Mm -hmm. Cheers to you and to the Derby this weekend. When we come back, wondering what to do about joint pain, we'll meet a husband and wife duo whose lives changed after knee surgery. And itching for that vacation? I know. We've got all the travel deals to get the best bang for your buck on your next summer getaway. That's when Houston Life returns.
Did you know knees are the most common site of pain in adults over the age of 50? This pain may prevent you from doing everyday things you enjoy. Well, that was the case for our next guests, husband and wife, Doug and Patricia, who both received life-changing knee replacement surgeries on the same day. Also joining us, Dr. Victor Fan, orthopedic surgeon with Memorial Hermann Joint Centers. Welcome to all three of you. Doug and Patricia, we're going to get to your story in just a moment, but Dr. Fan, I want to start with you. So first of all, uh, Memorial Hermann Joint Centers, the goal is to either surgically or non-surgically get people back to doing the activities they love. That's exactly correct, Derek. Uh, we have seven joint centers throughout the uh, Houston Metroplex. And the goal with any joint center is not just about the surgeries, but we also offer conservative treatments. Uh, we have over 38 uh, surrounding physical therapy departments within the Memorial Hermann system. So it's not just about the surgery, but it's also about the rehab to follow before and after. And then we also offer other alternatives other than just surgery. Uh, physical therapy being one of them, uh, along with injections. Um, and then as a last resort surgery when the patient feels that it's right for them. Well, and also, uh, we only have one life, right? And only one set of knees. And so if you are in the position where you need to have a replacement, you want to go to the experts. We do want to point out each year you perform more than 3,000 hip, knee, joint replacement procedures. That's more than any other hospital system in the greater Houston area. So Doug and Patricia, let's get to your story. So when did you two first notice there was a problem? It was, it was over a, a year before we had it done and everything. So, you know, we decided to do it together and everything. And what were you finding? Were you finding that you just had more limited mobility, knee pain? Describe your situation a little more. Yeah, I mean, to be quite honest with you, Derek, we had a lot of issues as far as knee pain was concerned. We had problems being able to, to walk. We, we do enjoy walking quite a bit, and it got to the point that that we wasn't able to get out and enjoy our, you know, and just enjoy our at the outside and so forth. So, uh, you know, our, our quality of life was really starting to go down a little bit. And, and you know, working with Dr. Fan, we actually had gone through, had some meniscus repairs, and, and it just kind of ended up getting to the point where we really didn't have a choice but to, but to do the knee replacement. It is incredible that your surgeries happened, uh, Dr. Fan. You were at the helm there on the same day in August of 2019. And I understand, uh, Doug and Patricia, that now you are both participating in 5Ks and also spending time with your grandkids. Yes, yes, we've done two 5Ks since we've had it done. And we hope to do more once COVID gets done and we get back to doing more and everything, yes. That is really incredible. More than a year and a half after surgery, it sounds like you two are going strong. Dr. Fan, so how common is this uh, scenario for folks like Doug and Patricia? Knee pain, quality of life going, going downhill a bit, and also what sort of recovery time can people expect? Yes, that's a great question, Derek. Um, you know, it's, it's very common, a joint replacement surgery, uh, whether it be a hip or a total knee, is one of the more common surgeries nowadays in the U.S. Uh, that being said is that, you know, with both uh, uh, Carlton's, we, we try to conserve the treatment consisting of therapy, uh, injections, uh, even arthroscopy. Uh, and it gets to the point where, um, just like Mr. Carlton said, when it becomes a quality of life issue where it's starting to affect your life and your quality of life, you know, your gait, your walking, the activities that you like to do, that's usually when we tell the patients it's time to have it done. Well, certainly, and again, uh, to underscore, there are non-surgical options as well. Most common side of pain in adults age 50 and older is the knees. Doug and Patricia, I'm glad to know you are doing well today. And Dr. Victor Fan, orthopedic surgeon with Memorial Hermann Joint Center, thanks so much to all three of you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Take good care. And for more information, you can visit memorialherman.org slash joint, or you can call 713-272-1888. Again, that number is 713-272-1888. All right, so uh, Courtney Zavala, we're going to switch gears and send things on over to you for a look at some hot summer destinations. All right, Derek, thank you so much. And whether you're planning to fly internationally or take a road trip this summer with the family, why not grab some great deals that are available right now? I'm all for it. Gabe Saglier with Travel Zoo joins us now with all the details. Gabe, it's great to see you, and I understand that... Great to see you, Courtney. People are ready to travel. I'm one of them. 
Are you feeling it? I yeah. am. Listen, we're not alone. We're not alone because, you know, I think I think spring uh, sort of came and all of a sudden things really sort of blossomed as far as people's comfort levels around uh, travel, planning to travel, booking travel, actually physically starting to travel. So spring break really sort of was, was our sort of first sign that things were starting to move. And now we're looking ahead toward the summer season. We just got results in from our monthly uh, surveys. This, was, this one was done earlier this month, looking specifically at the summer season. And yeah, 84% uh, of Americans are planning at least one uh, summer uh, vacation, 58% uh, planning two or more summer vacations. You're looking at video of Maui. I just got back from Wailea there on the south, southwestern shores of Maui. This is the uh, Fairmont Kealania Resort, uh, which, it, 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 Courtney, it took us about two days, maybe three into our vacation for me to realize just how badly we needed to be there. This was our first proper sort of family vacation in about a year and a half. Uh, it felt good to get back uh, to uh, on an airplane uh, to a destination that we, we have known and sort of loved over the years. Obviously some differences there, some COVID protocols very much visible and very much in effect. Uh, I think you come to a place like Hawaii, you want to, you know, you, you want to go there with respect. You want to play by the rules. You want to understand what the expectations are when visitors get there. You have very specific COVID tests that you've got to uh, get done within 72 hours, upload it to a specific website that the uh, government of Hawaii ha has established. So, that, you know, certain protocols and rules that you have to make sure you tick all those boxes. But boy, when you're there, Courtney, as you can imagine, it's, it's paradise. It's the paradise that we knew and loved pre-COVID and now slowly but surely getting back to uh, back well, to Well, you've got that island glow, Gabe, for sure. Okay, let's... If, we, if yeah. uh, I can tell. Okay, if Hawaii... <laughs> if, if we can't do that, you say head on over to Florida. Yeah, listen, beach vacations, number one on the list. Uh, you know, more, more, uh, getaway. And Florida has consistently, since the beginning of the year, been the number one a destination domestically that people have been searching for on our uh, Travel Zoo website. This is the SLS Hotel in South Beach, very sort of glam, uh, celebrity friendly uh, property. Uh, a couple of restaurants here that a lot of you feel sell a lot of celebs on a regular basis. Uh, and you're right there uh, on the water. Uh, rates here for travel through the summer season into even all the way through the fall into December from 169 a night. Uh, so if you're looking for that uh, sort of buzz around South Beach, you miss it. Uh, you know, Florida has been doing quite well. They were one of the early adopters of some looser regulations. Uh, and it's, I have to say, it's paid off for them in that they've seen a lot of foot traffic and there's a lot of mind share around a Florida getaway. These Absolutely. Days. Okay, moving on to PV, Puerto Vallarta, uh, Mexico, and then you also have South Padre. Let's hit both of them. We've got about a minute left. Yeah, so Mexico, the number one uh, international destination that people are searching for, obviously, it's really close. Uh, and a lot of these uh, regulations are a little bit looser there. Beautiful property in Puerto Vallarta, the Westin Resort and Spa. Every room here has got an ocean view. Four nights, two ninety nine. dollars okay, for travel through the summer season all the way into uh, early to mid-fall. Uh, you find a good airfare sale, uh, and then you're, you're set there. Four nights for two ninety nine there. Uh, and then, listen, if you want to do a road trip, 92% of Americans, according to our latest survey, will do a summer road trip, although the distance they're traveling by car this summer, shorter, three to five hours. Last summer was like seven, 12 hours or more. So we're traveling shorter distance by car, but we're still doing the car thing. This is the Pearl, South Padre, uh, four-star property right there on the beach. Uh, rates, if you go before and after the summer rush, so this is May and September, rates from $99 a night uh, with the breakfast daily. Uh, in the peak summer months, you're looking at rates between about 160 and 250 depending on where you go. Generally, midweek travel, as you know, Courtney, will be a little bit less expensive. For but sure. whether it's by road or by air, we're going out there this summer, and it's... I want to see you out there. I'll, I'll, somewhere along the along the way, I'm going to see you out there. Please. Okay, I'm going to have to get that real tan, too. You look great, Gabe. It's always great to see you. I'm saving my notes here. There's some great ideas. We'll see you soon. Awesome. Safe travels. Right, mahalo. Thank you. Bye. And if you need more information, we do have a link to connect with Gabe on our website, HoustonLife.tv, and keep it right here. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you at 3.30. Hi, Courtney. How are Hello. you? Hi, everybody. So glad you're still with us here at 3.30. All right, time now to get your comments on our question of the day. We asked, what is the most memorable school project you or your kids have done? And this first photo is very heartwarming for me. I love elephants. Brian writes in, I still have this elephant I made in elementary school sometime in the 1970s. Sadly, my artistic talents never grew beyond. Oh, you still have it. It's great. I know. And Kelly writes in, or uh, yes, my son is a huge Star Wars fan, and he recently did his wax museum project on 
George Lucas. Oh, that's, that's cool. Amazing. My nephews are obsessed with Star Wars. Cindy writes in, my psychedelic jumpsuit I made in home economics, which Betty Blank stole before I could even get a grade. I'm still mad 50 years later. Who's Betty? She did, She left out her last name. It's okay. You can tell us who it was. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> Except everybody. I don't remember any of mine. School projects? Mm -mm. You know, so I was home with my mom about a month ago. Once she was fully vaccinated, I went home. And it was so great to see her. And in the room where I stayed, she had a box of all my school projects from when I was a kid. That is awesome. It was incredible. So we sat there together. It took us about an hour. We only got halfway through. But it, I actually remembered some of them. Yeah. This Did you take the box home? years ago. Did I bring it back? Yeah. Oh, no. No? No, it's at my mom's house. Okay. All right, let's check in now with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at 4 o'clock. It's not the new artwork on the walls or anything Listen, in the new house? Listen, you guys, well, Keith, Christine, and Franklin, you all know, how would Brandon react if I brought home a full box of 30-year-old school projects? <laughs> He'd be like, we're going to need to build yeah. an extra room in the new house to put this there. Or rent no, some, rent some the storage. Our first start itching. attic piece. <laughs> Perfect this is going to look attic. so lovely in the attic, yes. yes. <laughs> i got to tell you, my first, I, you know, I've been in, started this in 82. Mm -hmm. my my first job interview, I had to draw cold fronts and warm fronts and H's and L's. We didn't have computers. Wow. We had to hand draw our maps, and part of my interview was to be able to draw a straight line. Oh Would have never gosh. been able to have that oh. job. Well, <laughs> now I know why I'm not a meteorologist. Because you can't draw? <laughs> See, we knew you were multi-talented, but we didn't know this the full, the full scope, right? Wow, an artiste and an admiral. Yes. Uh, hey. <laughs> it's an A-plus day. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell you what, there's sort of a serious flood threat shaping up. we got to talk about okay. this. 81, 83, 80 in Galveston. You can see the winds at least calm down. We're in the 14, 15 mile an hour range. And we've had a few spotty showers. Just had one here at our studios, as a matter of fact. Joel came in and said, Frank, it's raining. So I've, he's now a deputized weatherman. You can see out towards Sealy a few showers, too. But it's this front that's right there along 35. That's what's going to very slowly move our way. So as we move into this evening, here's the future cast for a few showers and maybe a thunderstorm. I'm not worried about thunderstorms tonight. We're not going to have anything like they had in San Antonio, which we'll talk about at four o'clock, but a few showers. This is midnight, 1230. So a few showers. It is overnight. It's your Friday commute that really gets messy around here. Look at this printout of showers and thunderstorms at 7, 730 tomorrow morning. And that continues right through the morning hours. This is 1030. I'm just fading the front off so that you can see what's going on here. But a wet Friday, there's 2 p.m. This is going to go all the way to 6. And in fact, as we head into the weekend, it remains on the wet side. Here's the rainfall future cast. As we go into 730 Friday, this red is 4 inches of rain out to the northwest and then as we continue through the day on Friday especially the west side we could add that up into the four to six inch range of, uh, of rain and maybe even more so we're gonna have to watch Friday really carefully especially on the west side this evening not so much but just get ready 10 20 30 percent chances of rain that's gonna go to 90 percent tomorrow so the few showers tonight the Friday flood potential and then more weekend rain that's all coming up at four o'clock looking like some indoor events we yeah. might need to take place yeah. catch all up right. on shameless <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> All right, thank you, Frank. Oh, look now at some of the other stories that we're working on this afternoon. The issue of police reform takes center stage in the city of Houston. Mayor Turner and Chief Finner announcing the implementation of several key policy changes, one of them having to do with how fast body cam footage of a police interaction should be made public. We've got team coverage on the changes and what it means for Houstonians. And last night, President Joe Biden made an urgent plea to all eligible Americans to get the vaccination as soon as possible. This as the demand for vaccinations has dwindled from the beginning of the month. So coming up, Houston's only TV health reporter Haley Hernandez looks at the reason for the vaccination declines and the push to get more people the shot. Plus, if you're looking to buy a car this year, get ready to shell out more cash. Consumer expert Amy Davis is going to take a closer look at what's behind the sticker prices and how to get the car you really want. So some good information coming up at 4 o'clock. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4. Okay. Thanks. Well, fans will recognize Hollywood legend and comedian V. George Lopez in his latest film, Walking with Herb, hitting theaters for a limited release. Yeah, it's good to see him back on the big screen. The film also stars Edward James Olmos, Kathleen Quinlan, and Christopher McDonald. And Lauren Kelly is here with more on that. Hey, Lauren. This was the coolest. It's one of those films that's really going to get you. Walking with Herb takes audiences on an 18 hole roller coaster as one man discovers how faith, family, second chances, and emotion. Motorcycle riding messenger can make the impossible possible.
possible. Every major on the planet will be gunning for the $3 million prize. Win the golf championship of the world entire. <laughs> Meet me at the Artesia Country Club bright and early. Coming in to finish the sign-up, Dave. You haven't played in years. 35, to be exact. Now, JoJo, hit me a nice fade. Sponge cake. Welcome with Herbal is, is a book about a guy, uh, Joe, who's played by Aaron Edward James Olmos, who suffers loss in his family and has really broken his trust and belief in the higher power. And uh, once that happens, you know, I don't think you have a, a, a very happy life look, you know, to look forward to. And the Almighty sends down a messenger, me, who happens to look Chicano. All, there's messengers, <laughs> around us, messengers around us every day. And I have to make him believe by doing something that he once loved to do, that joy can return and that happiness can return and that his trust and his faith will return. Absolutely. And uh, much like in life, every time that, uh, that his character looks like something's going to go wrong, his faith is questioned and his trust is questioned, just like all of us in, in, in everyday life. So you've been playing golf for a while, but have you always known how to ride a motorcycle or did you learn that for the film too? <clears throat> that is a great question. I am not a fan of motorcycles, I do, although I do love the way they look. Um, I had to learn to ride a 1,100 pound uh, Indian motorcycle and uh, it, it, it's uh, very enjoyable. But there's also like a center of balance that I learned uh, quickly after the, like the third time it rolled over on me. Oh no! Well, George, I gotta ask, aside from the motorcycle and the golf, and of course the wardrobe, which was amazing for you in the film, what was it about this role that really had you sign on? Well, you, you know, <clears throat> having a lot of great things happen to me in my life, I've been very fortunate. And, you know, growing up, I never thought that there was anything that would have been uh, happy or made me happy for so many years and I just think the message is that you know if you don't give up that everything is possible I never imagined because I never saw anybody that looked like me on TV that 40 years later that I would be the guy that I wished to see when I was growing up that's that's pretty amazing thank you so much for the time we love you here in Houston we can't wait to watch walking with her only in theaters hey have a great day and thanks for joining us and please come stop by the Houston Live studios once everything is good to go again okay Absolutely, I'll do that. Yes, thank you. Looks like such a great movie. Walking with Herb is in theaters for a limited three-night engagement tomorrow, April 30th, May 1st, and May 3rd. More of my interview with George at HoustonLife.tv. Guys, did you know George's very first tour, his very first stop ever? Houston. Really? really? Yes. He told it to us as he was saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. And what an incredible career. I can't, I, I've loved him from the beginning. Absolutely. He's just fantastic. And the movie looks wonderful with the whole cast. It's amazing. All right, Lauren, as Courtney always says, there's always a Houston connection. <laughs> Got it. Thanks for that. <laughs> Coming up on Houston Life, comedian Shang Wang shares how you can be part of the local celebration marking the start of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. There he is. We'll meet him and chat right after this. You find one ripe avocado, that's, that's a moment of joy. <laughs> you find a bag of five, that's a crisis. <laughs> it's different now. I can't go out and have dinner tonight. I gotta stay home and handle my business. It's so true. <laughs> so true. We can all relate to that. That was a clip of Shang Wang's hilarious stand-up on HBO's Two Dope Queens. Known for his smartly crafted routines, the Houston comedian has toured with big names like Ali Wong. He even wrote for the popular sitcom Fresh Off the Boat. And he now returns home virtually for a special occasion, and he joins us now with the details. A little bit longer hair, a little beard. Great to see you, Shang. Hi, thank you so much. Yeah, things have changed a little bit this last year. <laughs> hey, we're all, that's just it, you know, we're coming out of 2020. Um, let's bring everybody up to date. Of course, you're from Houston. You went to Bel Air High School, um, mm -hmm. grew up on the south side, and, and you immigrated with your parents from Taiwan in 1982. Is that, that's you and your dad, right? Aww. Yeah, that's like Bobby and Hank Hill right there. <laughs> When did you know that you wanted to be a comedian? Look at this yearbook photo. I'm sorry. Did anybody tell you we were going to show these? <laughs> no, that's great, though. I mean, look at those sideburns. Yes. Those killer sideburns. <laughs> um, I didn't grow up 
thinking that I wanted to be a stand-up. I didn't grow up with much exposure to that. I didn't even know what that really was. It wasn't until I got to college and then there was a, there was a group on campus that was basically supporting, uh, providing a space, a platform for Asian American students to encourage them to like create something and, and share it with an audience. And that was the first time I tried doing stand-up. Um, and the jokes I did were terrible, but it was super fun. Uh, of course, I wasn't like immediately sure that this was going to be my calling. Um, I, I, I went ahead and still finished college with a business degree. And by that time, like all the other students, with the, all the other business majors were like, had their internships, their interviews, their salaries, all that stuff was already lined up. And I just felt like I don't want to get a job. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, um, I don't want to use a professional interview or office voice. I don't want to tuck in my shirt. I don't want to buy a second wardrobe just to go to work. So that's kind of like part of the, part of the drive for me to follow this path. Um, yeah. Well, you part do it, it well. I mean, the story is I was, I was, you know, in college and um, my friends also introduced me to this comedian named Mitch Hedberg, who is a brilliant comedian and he's so uh, refreshing because he was the first comedian that kind of showed me that you can just do comedy based on your most random thoughts and feelings that are true and resonant, but they don't have to be um, mean or blue or dirty. They just have to be honest mm -hmm. and open. Well, like the avocado thing, we can all relate to that, right? Yes. Five ripe avocados. It is a crisis. So let's talk about, uh, we're all products of our environment, right, Shang? And it seems like, I know now you live in California, but do you find that growing up in Houston, that that sort of comes through in your work, that it influenced you? I mean, I left Houston a while ago. I come back to visit quite often, but it's hard to say exactly if it was, I mean, I, it's hard to say what Houston, I can attribute directly to Houston or just my childhood. I do take my time on stage. I, 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 I take my time. People notice my pauses. That might be like a slower paced Texas thing. I'm not sure. But I think it's more about my childhood in general. You know, like growing up in Texas, growing up as a son of immigrants. I think this was common for a lot of children of immigrants. You know, at some point in your life, you become very aware that you and your family are different. Mm -hmm. And at that age, you don't feel like that's something, you don't feel like, you don't, you don't think of it as a good thing. You don't feel like you, you don't embrace those differences because you feel like at that point in life, you know, st standing out, sticking out kind of makes you more vulnerable to getting picked on or made fun of or whatever. So I, and, and, and I mean, the, the thing about, you know, most references to Asian culture, Asian folk, Asian people in, in media, in entertainment, or in the schoolyard, especially in the context of comedy, usually it, it's not very nice, it's dehumanizing, or it's mean, or it's just not very funny. And so I decided kind of early on that um, my stand-up was going to be um, just do no harm. It's going to be supportive of the Asian, you know, of, of, of Asian culture and community. And basically, I wanted to inspire other kids who feel like they don't fit in to love themselves and believe that they belong just as much as everybody else does and, and, and know that they are worthy, that their thoughts and feelings are valid no matter what. Absolutely. And I don't know if I have to achieve that, but that's the goal. Well, you're doing a great job, and I, and I really do think that, you know, everyone deserves a cheerleader. Everybody deserves a friend. Um, and, I, and I love that you've not only taken this, your stand-up, but you're also, you know, exploring this and writing for TV shows, Fresh Off the Boat, and, um, la you know, you were on Last Comic Standing. So you're taking all these experiences, and now we get to share in all of this, too, because you're going to be helping out the Asia Society kick off Asian Pacific Heritage Month this Saturday, and what can we expect? from the event um it's just going to be a fun conversation talking comedy talking houston talking food plants asian america talking about life um i encourage y'all it's just gonna be a, an event on, on zoom similar to um you know just a just a just a zoom meeting basically um i encourage y'all to get some wine or some beers some fancy lacroix and hang out with us we're gonna um have a chat function in the event so that you can do some q a we will have questions from the audience and it should be a fun time well, Shang Wang, it is a pleasure to meet you. Congratulations on all your success. And I think it is so great uh, that you are using your fame and celebrity to be a powerful voice for your community. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Be well. Take care.
You too. You're welcome anytime. And we do have a link on our website where you can see a list of all the events happening at Asia Society Texas Center to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. He is so funny. So great. Yeah. Okay, now let's check in with Joe, who is getting us a front row seat to the Kentucky Derby. That's right, they're gonna have a huge watch party here at Reverie on Richmond. And guess what? We're not gonna be only talking about the food, but the beautiful hat contest that they're gonna be doing here. And there's gonna be a grand prize associated with it. We're gonna tell you what details you need to know about the watch party here so that you can come and try and get that grand prize. More of Houston Life when we return. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We are at Revelry on Richmond talking all about their Kentucky Derby watch party that they're going to have here. It's going to be a lot of excitement. We're in their outdoor patio right now. We're speaking with Rachel here. The hat queen is what I'm being told to tell us all about the hat contest that you're going to have happening here for the watch party. That's going to be exciting. Yes, it's so much fun to see if people wear hats or of course, you know, females can also wear the fascinators, the smaller ones that are kind of headband like. See what the bow ties look yes. like, the men's hats. Just so much fashion happening. And what I'm hearing is that both the men and women are going to be able to try and compete for an actual prize, right? Yeah, we're going to be giving away gift cards, one to the best dressed male, one to the best dressed female. So be sure to bring your A game when it comes to the fashion. Okay, so a little tip for all of the viewers out there. Are you looking for maybe the bigger, the better, or smaller and just detailed? I mean, obviously for me, bigger is better. <laughs> but, you know, handmade is also fun. So if you want to get creative and add some flowers, do your own kind of DIY project, that's we great. We got it all going. Creativity, it's just also about having fun so make it sure is. you're having fun and we're going to have some fun with the food items that they're going to have here up for grabs too at the watch party you can get any of these that's on the menu we have the reveled eggs reveled eggs and that has one on top of it it has our bourbon bacon onion jam and flash fried short ribs so oh. you've got some sweetness some crunch to go with the tangy deviled egg it's so balanced so, so good. good we got the parmesan cheese popcorn and the pretzel with all of the amazing sauces this one right here is the what is it called again the cinnamon brown sugar cinnamon butter cinnamon brown need, sugar like, butter bite. tell people really quickly what time does it all kick off and is there any tickets that they need to come and participate? So, tickets are absolutely not required. Now the thing you want to remember is Kentucky Derby is the fastest two minutes in sports, most exciting two minutes, but be sure you get here early. You can have some mint juleps, have some snacks, hang out, mimosas, Bloody Marys, we've got it all. Absolutely. Rachel, thank you so much. I'm going to get ready to start eating some of this here, Courtney and Derek. It's going to be a great time for people to come out here Saturday and enjoy those mint juleps, the Kentucky Derby, and some amazing prizes too. Back to y'all in the studio for now. I got work to do. All right. Okay, Joe, have fun. <laughs> After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a way women are taking control. All right, and as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey there, Kevin. Derek and Courtney, tonight on ET, a big night of exclusives. What George Clooney is only telling us about turning the big 6-0. Then, why Jessica Simpson threw out her scale and Anthony Mackie on the future of Captain America. Listen, it's going to be a great show. I have some very interesting co-hosts. You don't want to miss it. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now sit tight. Houston Life will be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Life, Lauren Kelly is gearing up for International Female Ride Day. It's all about fun and empowerment and getting more women outside to ride. And Tangi Patton of Good Taste TV is back with a taste of summer. Her refreshing recipes for a picnic in the city. That sounds fun, Courtney. I'm all for it. And tomorrow could be your chance to spin and win on the Houston Life prize wheel. Yeah, we have some pretty fantastic prizes up for grabs, including the spa and stay package from City Center, a $100 gift card to Landry's, and even, Courtney, this $1,000 space right here. Cash. Cash money. All you have to do for your chance to spin and win is head to clicktohouston.com slash insider and sign up to be a KPRC2 insider. It's that easy, folks. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for your chance to win big and we will don our costume Costumes. I can't wait for our costumes. I cannot wait for our costumes. And it's yeah. Friday tomorrow. Yay! Look at that. You can win $1,000 cash. Oh, I can't win, but they can They win. can. I looked at you. I meant that. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. That just about does it for us. That's right. Let's send over to Keith and Christine for the news at four. They were just pointing at you, Keith. I don't, yeah, because so, so they, I can, I can win. Oh my gosh, thank you. Not y'all.
Oh, not us oh, either. Beyond the camera. But you can okay. spin it someday. I was gonna say. <laughs> it's, really feel like you're a part of it. I was gonna say it's always a spin and win when we hang with those guys. But <laughs> if I can't win, I don't know. Oh. Okay. You're always no. a winner. <laughs> okay.